Hello, lovely souls. It's Emily from Twins in Union. And I just want to take a moment to say a big thank you to all of my awesome new subscribers. Um, I was really blown away by how many views my last video got from the reading I did on the solar eclipse energies. Um, that video had more views than any of my other videos, so I was just really excited and just pinching myself, and yeah, this, this journey just continues to amaze me, and I just want to let you guys know how much I appreciate you and all of your lovely comments. Um, it really brightens my day. And I also want to say thank you to everyone who's purchased a reading from me and who's connected with me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I just feel truly blessed to be connecting with so many wonderful people in my soul tribe. And I just want you all to know how grateful I am for your love and support. So thank you. So that being said, I will get into the topic for this video which is all about discovering your mission. So my intention for this video is to really help you get more clarity on what your mission is and to share some specific exercises and tools with you um, about how you can move more fully into union with your twin as a result of strengthening your mission. So, why mission? Why mission and why now? So, there are several reasons why mission is important and why now is the time. So, mission is a very key reason for why we are on this crazy journey. <laughs> when you have those days when you wonder how you got yourself caught up in this crazy ride and you start having doubts and you're thinking about throwing in the towel. This is when you need to go back and remember your mission. Remember your why. What is your why? Why are you here? Why are you doing this? Why are we on this wild ride. <laughs> this is what your mission is. Your mission is your why. So this is the reason that you volunteered before you incarnated. Your soul raised its hand and said, yes, I volunteered to take on this mission um, in this lifetime. So your mission is your why. And maintaining a mission mindset will really help alleviate a lot of the loneliness that can tend to accompany separation. We're, we're in that kind of anxious space where we're trying to find our way through and fumble around and you know, we're in that place of either chasing or maybe we're running. Um, wherever we're at, if we can keep coming back to this mission-focused mindset, it's a wonderful cure that helps alleviate all of those separation types of feelings. So it really gives you a powerful sense of purpose and it takes you higher and it elevates you in your ascension and it really fills you up with all of that goodness and all of that universal love energy that is ever present and always there around us and flowing through us each and every moment of the day. It really opens us up to accessing that universal love energy. So mission opens doors of opportunity that you might not have otherwise seen. It really, it's part of that opening up to that universal love energy that allows you to start to see doors of opportunity opening before you. 
just being in the flow. Um, there's a really great quote from Joseph Campbell that maybe you've heard of it. He says, follow your bliss. If you follow your bliss, you put yourself on a kind of track that has been there all the while waiting for you. When you can see that, you begin to meet people who are in the field of your bliss and they open the doors to you. So that's a wonderful quote from Joseph Campbell that I feel like really touches on how this mission energy works in our twin flame connection. When we can get on the track that is there waiting for us, then we get in that flow and we start to just naturally attract everything. The doors start to open, things start to feel natural, and things just start to open up to us. So, you know, it really helps us align with the life of our dreams, following our bliss. So having a mission-based mindset also aligns you more and more with the truth of your soul. And when we align more and more with our soul, then that creates this undeniable magnetic pull that draws your twin flame in closer to you. So having a mission mindset is one of the most powerful tools that will help move you more fully into your union. And why now? What is it about the time being now? Well, we're in a really amazing place right now, energetically. You know, we've just gone through this lion's gate. We've just had this solar eclipse. Um, you know, all of these universal cosmic events are supporting us like never before. And... The world is really ready to receive us. The energies are ripe and the energies are supporting us to really step forward and own the truth of who we are, own our sovereignty, own the divinity that flows through, flows through us. And it's really time to stand tall and say, I am a twin flame. I am powerful. I am here to serve humanity, and the world needs me now more than ever before. So it's go time. So let's get to it. <laughs> so the Twin Flame mission is really like three missions rolled into one journey. So the first mission is we have our collective mission, which is based on that soul group that we are a part of, the Twin Flame Mission. And then we have the Soul Mission, which is that individual unique aspect of who we are and our unique gifts that we have to share. And then we have our Union Mission, where we are coming together with our beloved and bringing in that powerful energy of the union to create positive change. So some things to keep in mind are you do not have to know what your soul mission and your un union mission is in order to be on the journey. So discovering your mission is part of the process. It's part of coming into union, and it will be revealed to you in divine timing, just like your union. So all you have to do is set the intention to begin your soul's mission and remain open. Start by acknowledging that you have a valuable role as part of your soul group, as part of the Twin Flame Collective. You have a unique role that is very valuable. And you don't have to have it all figured out right away. So, you know, there's no need to pile on extra pressure and extra stress and feel like, oh, I have to hurry up and figure out what my mission is or I won't come into union. Like, that's not the mindset we want. We want the mindset of just setting the intention 
And then that same kind of surrendering, you know, being in this co-creative dance with the universe and working with the divine and just taking the small baby steps forward and trusting that the universe will work with us and it will be revealed to us when the time is right. So if you've had any kind of stress or pressure, you know, about your mission, just let that go. Take a deep breath and let that go right now and trust. And also, you know, you don't have to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> your mission can look very different. Everyone has a unique soul path. So, you know, there there's a lot of twin flames on YouTube, myself being one of them, but that's not what's true for everyone. You don't have to start a blog. You don't have to learn to read tarot cards. You don't have to become a healer. You know, it will feel very natural and very aligned with your soul, whatever your mission is. There are a lot of twin flames who are doing amazing, powerful healing work, impacting thousands and millions of people's lives, and they don't have a YouTube channel. So, you know, everyone's mission is unique, and it's an expression of their soul's path. And part of your journey is remembering your soul, and through that remembering, then you will remember your mission. So start with where you are right now, and know that where you are right now in this very moment is okay. And it's about taking it one step at a time, one day at a time, and working with intention and co-creating with the universe and allowing it to come to you. Okay, so now that we've got that all taken care of, let's move into talking about the collective twin flame mission. So the primary mission of our collective twin flame soul group is to support the evolution of human consciousness by clearing out the wounds and the blocks of the old templates, the old relationship template through this mirroring process, through this dance that we are in with our twin in order to create a new template based on unity consciousness and authentic divine love. So just by the very fact that you are on the journey, you are actively participating in your twin flame journey, you are already on your collective mission. So it's not like, you know, oh, I'm a twin flame, but I don't know what to do. I don't have a mission because you being a twin flame is part of your mission. So you are on mission. You were born a twin flame. Your mission started the day that you came out of your mother's womb <laughs> and you saw the light of day. You were on your twin flame mission. You chose it before you incarnated. And you were born as a powerful, highly advanced soul. And all of your life experiences up to this point reflect these different aspects of humanity that you took on to help heal and clear in order to serve humanity and elevate and evolve the consciousness of humanity. So you awakened to your twin flame mission on a conscious level when you had that unexpected aha moment, when you suddenly heard the words twin flame in a meditation or you Googled something and twin flame popped up on the internet and you were like curious and you started to research it. Whatever that unexpected aha moment was that came to you when you had your awakening, bringing the twin flame aspect of your soul into your consciousness, you know, that awakened you to the remembrance of that aspect of your soul and your soul tribe, your soul family. So it was this point of your journey when it was time for you to remember on a deeper level who your soul family is and that your collective mission is to help heal the planet. 
and your soul chose this path and your mission will always be part of your soul's blueprint. So when we can stay focused on the bigger picture, going back to that why, that your mission is your why, um, that bigger picture of your collective mission helps us remember why are we here? Why are we doing this? You know, that's part of why we have the conscious awakening so that we can be like, oh, okay, now I consciously know, I consciously remember that's why I chose this crazy journey. <laughs> and when we, re when we remember our why, you know, then that really liberates us from all of the, the 3D heaviness, all of that resistance and all of the difficulty and all of the discomfort and, you know, all of the, those 3D perspectives that can weigh us down. When we can come back and see the bigger picture and remember our why, then it frees us. You know, we can say, oh, yes, that's why I'm doing this crazy journey. <laughs> so if you haven't already watched um, my video with a uh, channeled message from Archangel Michael, it's one of the first couple of videos I released. And I think it would be really inspiring for you. Um, even if you have already watched it, it might be a nice refresher um, to inspire you. But um, Archangel Michael really goes into that bigger picture thinking, that bigger uh, perspective, that that higher perspective for why we're doing this and how greatly we are needed. So I'll, I'll put a link for that in the description box below if you want to check that out. So when we incarnate as a twin flame, we take on all of these templates and paradigms of you know, our ancestral lineage, um, the collective masculine, the collective feminine, the inner child, um, past life um, experiences. And then we, the divine feminine and the divine masculine, we come together in this energetic dance and we help each other heal and clear these wounds and these old templates that we took on. And we transmute them into a new template and a new paradigm of love in the form of sacred union. And this can be expressed in various ways and in various forms. Um, I know for me, a big part has been physically taking it on with my physical body through chronic illness. So that was part of my soul's path and part of how my soul has taken on these different patterns and um, cultural thoughts and family um, ancestral patterns, things like that. Um, you know, others could take them on through the form of addiction or through the form of, you know, other cultural belief systems or other relationships, things like that. So, you know, we take them on in different aspects and different ways and and then, you know, we go through this healing work. We do the inner work, we do the energy work, we do the clearing work, we're purging, we're transmuting, we're purifying, and we're using whatever various modes and methods of healing and clearing work that resonate with us. So it's, you know, through this healing, this is a huge part of what we are doing as our collective mission and accomplishing our collective mission. We are doing this healing work. And along with the healing work, you know, all that healing we are doing, it's serving humanity. You know, it's breaking down the old template. Um... Another aspect of the collective Twin Flame mission that I find very powerful is, I like to call it the Twin Flame Ripple Effect. So, you know, as Twin Flames, we are very powerful lightworkers, and we can accomplish 
great things through small acts, even just small acts of kindness. And it's through this twin flame ripple effect that we can have a broad scale effect through these small actions, kind of like throwing a pebble in the water and watching the ripples expand out. Um, and you don't have to be in union with your twin to be part of this ripple. You know, you can start with just a simple, small act of kindness and just set the intention for it to expand out. So for instance, um, you know, you could say something nice to someone. I know for me, I have, there's a woman that works at my local grocery store in the deli. And so she waits on me a lot at the deli and my heart just always sends her so much love because she just looks like she's had a rough life, you know, kind of like when you see a dog at a shelter that's been abused. She kind of has that kind of energy about her. And um, one day I noticed she had new eyeglasses and they were really pretty eyeglasses and very stylish. And, and I just said, did you get new eyeglasses? Those just, those are really sharp. Those look great on you. I really like those. And her eyes lit up and just her whole energy changed and she smiled and she was like, well, yes, I did, you know, and, and I just, I knew that I, I made her day. I brightened her day and it's just those little things, you know, if you get a subtle nudge to just say a compliment to someone or help a neighbor or, um, you know, smile at a stranger or just, you know, little things like that. It doesn't have to be something big. It can really, you know, have a positive impact on someone and then that ripples out and then has a positive effect on, you know, like for that woman that I said that compliment to, she probably had better interactions with her coworkers that day and better interactions with her family that day. You never know what small actions are going to do, what kind of a ripple effect they're going to have. So start small, start with just, you know, calling an old friend or sending a thank you card in the mail or just there's opportunities around us in our everyday life um, all the time. So ask yourself how you can serve others and, you know, do not underestimate your power. No matter how small the action is, it can have a huge ripple effect. So, you know, don't forget that. Look for those opportunities of how can you make a positive difference. And you know, when you are really well on your way, you've done a lot of your healing work and you're taking these small actions and you're making a positive difference in others' lives in small ways, this all creates momentum for going deeper and coming into your wholeness. And that is when your individual soul mission will start to reveal itself to you. And your individual soul mission involves really, you know, discovering who you are as an individual, stepping into your wholeness, embracing your true divine nature, and fully surrendering your union over to the divine. You know, giving your union to God and claiming what you know in your heart and really stepping into your power. So that's when you begin to tap into your passions on a deeper level and you start to feel a deep desire to make a positive difference in the world by serving others through your unique spiritual gifts. And you don't have to be in union with your twin to do this. You know, this is your individual soul mission. So you know, this is where you can connect with God and connect with your own divinity within you. And you can invite your twin to come in as the third energy. So, you know, this is one of the awesome secret superpowers of being a twin flame. 
you connect with source, you connect with your own divinity, and you invite your twin spirit to work with you and assist you in doing your soul's mission. And, you know, you and your twin may have very different individual soul missions, you may have very different unique gifts. So for example, my divine masculine, he is a numbers guy. He loves math. He loves numbers. He works in the banking industry. And I, as the divine feminine, feminine is, I'm very opposite. <laughs> I have my unique gifts in the field of art and creativity. You know, so he's the numbers guy, and I'm the artsy, creative gal. And, you know, both of our gifts are very unique and different, but that's part of how we complement each other and how we bring balance and wholeness into our soul connection. So don't feel like, you know, you have to have the exact same soul mission as your counterpart. Um, also, keep in mind that... Um, your soul mission may or may not be the same as your career path. Um, they might be intertwined or they might not. Um, you could have a mission that involves volunteer work or maybe your mission involves parenting or a ministry. Your mission could start off as a volunteer service and then evolve into something that does become your career path. So the point is to just think outside of the box and start small and allow it to evolve over time. And once you set your intention to serve others with your gifts, then you will begin to attract your mission to you. So how can you discover your soul mission? So I'm going to lay out five steps to help you discover your soul mission. So... Feel free to take notes here if you want. So step number one is dive deep into your soul. So discovering your individual soul mission, it's a process of digging deeper into your soul. Look at it as if your soul is like this uncharted, unexplored territory. And it's like this mine full of all of these hidden gems that are just waiting to be discovered. And your job is to begin excavating this mine of beautiful gemstones that have been hiding deep inside of you. You are full of all of these sparkling diamonds and sapphires and rubies and emeralds. And they've just been covered up from years of conditioning, from programming, from society, from culture, from religion, from family patterns, from educational systems, all of these outdated belief systems that told you who you are and who you should be. Um, there's a quote from Pablo Picasso, and it's one of my favorite quotes. He said, Every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once, he, once we grow up. So I'll say that again. Every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. And he's using that word artist in the broad sense. We all have these unique creative gifts. You know, that part of us that's imaginative and in touch with wonder and curiosity and magic. So, you know, we get all of this conditioning and programming and wounding and all of this junk and gunk that gets toppled on top of our soul as we're growing up. And, you know, it's, it's like throwing a big blanket over our gifts and we can't see them as well. And so we need to dig deep into our soul and rediscover the beauty, you know, find that beauty, find that joy that's inside of you so that you can confidently go out in the world and share all of those beautiful sparkly parts of yourself. So stop a moment right now 
and ask yourself, you know, what wounds or blocks or beliefs are holding you back from aligning with your soul's truth? What is covering up those beautiful gems that are hiding inside of you? And, you know, be willing to release and let go of all of those old ideas of who you thought you were so that you can embrace the powerful truth of who you really are at a soul level. You know, where are you playing small and how can you step into the power of who you are? So using myself as an example, when my mission was revealed to me, I really had to sit down and, you know, I had to take a hard look at who I thought I was and ask myself if, if it was really the truth of who I am on a deep soul level. And I realized that who I thought I was was heavily based around an identity that I created in my childhood when I was diagnosed with an illness. So if you watched my first video, I share more about my personal story and you know how my health played a role in that. And being diagnosed with an illness as a child, I created this identity of thinking that I was powerless in my life and feeling like I was weak and that I wasn't able to create change and I had to do what the doctor said and I kind of had to be careful and, you know, my family was very protective of me and, you know, kind of created this identity of like having to stay safe and small and confined and in this little box, you know, but I realized that's just an identity that I created and I was totally willing to let that go. It was scary, but, you know, I started to see like the truth of who I am as a powerful divine feminine goddess who has deep wisdom and courage and strength and who can share her gifts to bring healing and transformation to the world. So embracing my soul's truth, it felt amazing and liberating, but like I said, it was, it was scary too. You know, we kind of get attached and comfortable in these little identities that we create for ourselves. So where are you willing to step outside of your comfort zone? You know, it's like a death and a rebirth. So we have to allow the person that we thought we were to die in order to give birth to the powerful person that is our soul's truth. So when you're doing this, let it be a process and give yourself time and really dive deep. Okay, so step two is go back to your childhood. So we talked a little bit about going back to childhood in terms of identities and finding our truth, but let's go back and look at, you know, how, how did we like to play? So when you were a kid, what did you say you wanted to be when you grew up? What did you love to do? What brought you joy? Um, what experience did you experiences did you have that ignited passion and a sense of wonder and curiosity and magic in you? What really left an impression on you and what did you like to do to just play? So for me, when I was a girl, I remember going to see an art show um, and I was standing in front of a painting and I was just fascinated and mesmerized. And I remember saying to myself, I want to do that when I grow up. And I would spend hours in my bedroom with all of my art supplies, drawing and making pretty pictures and listening to music. And, you know, it was like my safe, happy place. And it was how I nurtured my soul and how I escaped all the family drama. <laughs> so I would just go to my room and do my artwork. You know, so from my childhood experiences and how I played and what I loved to do, I knew that art and creativity were passions of mine. Number three, step number three is look at how you spend your time. So what do you daydream about doing? What would you rather be doing? 
how are you spending your time each day? If it's helpful, then you could keep a diary of how you're spending your time each day and look at what are the highlights and what are the things that you don't like to do? What feels natural natural and enjoyable to you? Um, if money wasn't important, what would you like to do? If, if you could do anything for free, um, what would you do? And something else to keep in mind too is how do others relate to you and how do you relate to the world? So for me, I noticed I had a lot of people coming up to me and they would just like start opening up and sharing their life story with me and telling me about all their problems and like really deep personal stuff, you know? <laughs> and I'd kind of be thinking to myself, why are these people telling me like these intimate details about their personal life? I didn't get it. <laughs> I was just like, wow, you know, why, what is it? And, you know, it took me time, but I realized that's part of my gift. I have a gift where, you know, I hold sacred space for people and I listen and they open up to me and through providing that sacred space for them, that is enabling them to heal and to process and, you know, to ascend. And that is my gift, you know, is holding sacred space. So think about how do others relate to you? How do people in your family, how do friends, how do co-workers, what things do they come to you for advice about? And, you know, how are they interacting with you? What are they asking you for help with? Um, and that can help give you additional clues about what some of your hidden gifts are and what you're good at and what things are natural to you. Um, so something else is, you know, when you're realizing what your passions are, ask yourself, you know, how can you start to spend more time doing the things that you love? How can you um, put more um, intention and more time and more energy into those things? Because what we place our attention on will grow and expand. So for me, you know, I knew I was passionate about my artwork. I knew I wanted to bring more beauty into the world. So I joined a local group of artists and I began networking with other artists. I began showing my artwork at local businesses. Um, and I was also passionate about holistic health and healing. And I started volunteering at a local hospital that has a healing arts program where artists work with patients and help them heal through creative expression. Um, I experimented with teaching art classes to elderly people in nursing homes. So I was really experimenting and exploring and feeling things out. And then ultimately that you know, kept building and led to me fully aligning with my twin flame mission, with my soul mission, by combining all of these passions together to serve my soul tribe, to serve all of you. And so, you know, it's a process. And like I was saying before, it's like you're opening all of these different doors and you're seeing what's on each side of all of these different doors and one door will just keep leading to more doors. Okay, step four. And this goes, ties in with the image that you see on the screen here. I did put these superheroes here for a reason. <laughs> so step number four is who is your favorite superhero? And what is it about them that you admire? So think about what your dream or your vision is for the world and who are the people that inspire you the most? Who do you admire and who do you look up to? So my favorite superhero is Wonder Woman. I'm a child of the 70s and 80s and I grew up watching Wonder Woman on TV and I really, really wanted the Wonder Woman under ruse. <laughs> 
but my mom refused to get them for me. Gosh darn it. So anyway, I just, I wanted to be Wonder Woman. I wanted that gold crown. I wanted those magic gold bracelets that could, you know, repel the bullets. I wanted the invisible jet. I wanted the lasso of truth. I wanted all of it. I wanted to be Wonder Woman. So, you know, it was interesting because when I was preparing to start my YouTube channel, the movie Wonder Woman was out in the theater and, you know, I wanted to get fired up and inspired and starting my mission and starting this YouTube channel. So, you know, the movie just really blew me away and I realized, no wonder I love Wonder Woman. She is... Her story is the story of a warrior and a goddess rising up in her power. You know, she's born with this destiny. She undergoes all of this rigorous training. And she believes in using her powers to help others and to do good in the world. And most of all, she believes in the power of love. And it just really resonated with me and it really inspired me. So, you know, think about who is your superhero that resonates with you and what is it about them and what they stand for that, you know, mirrors back to you the qualities that you possess and the, the powers that you possess that you want to create a similar vision in the world. Um... And if you don't have a superhero, think about just the everyday superheroes who are, you know, mentors in your everyday life. Maybe it was a teacher you had, or maybe it's a public figure or a celebrity um, or an author or another spiritual teacher. I, I was a big fan of Carolyn Mace. I loved all of her books. Um, you know, I love Oprah. I think Oprah is a great spiritual teacher. Um, as an artist, I loved Claude Monet and Georgia O'Keeffe. So think about, you know, historical figures, public figures, celebrities, people in your everyday life who you look up to and admire, and what is it about them that resonates with you and your passions and your vision? Okay, step five is ask for guidance. So you can ask for guidance from your higher self, um, from source, from your divine team, your spirit guides, angels, whatever resonates with you. Um, you know, if you want to work with Archangel Michael, he's the archangel that oversees missions. Um, but open yourself up to receiving guidance, whether it's from your higher self or the universe or you know, spirit guides, um, ask for help, ask for guidance, and it will come to you. Um, you can look for signs from the universe in terms of numbers. If you start seeing the numbers 99, 999, or 911, these are lightworker codes, and it's a call to serving humanity. So when you start seeing these numbers, then that can be a clue to you. It's Time to start thinking about mission. It's time to start putting that light worker energy to work. Um, you can also seek out a twin flame spiritual teacher who resonates with you. You know, sometimes you need a mentor or a coach who can help shine the light on the gems within you so that you can see what those gems are more clearly. You know, it's easy for us to have these blind spots when it comes to seeing our gifts. And a twin flame teacher is like another pair of eyes that can help you see your true self. You know, I reached out to a twin flame teacher to help me clarify my mission. And, you know, she really showed me all of these gems within me that I was blind to. And it ignited this new passion and new perspective within me. Um... You know, if you feel like I'm a twin flame teacher that you resonate with, then I would be happy to hold space for you and help shine light on your unique gifts. Um, so open up to receiving support. Open up to receiving guidance because it's there for you. 
So a couple of additional tips, um, you know, if you have setbacks um, along the way, then tr try not to let that get you down because, you know, it's part of the journey and um, I know in my process I was, you know, trying to apply to different art festivals and art shows and I was getting rejected and rejected and rejected <laughs> and you know I got down in the dumps about it but then I realized these rejections are spirit's way of just you know redirecting my course a little bit and saying you know let's shift things and move over this way a little bit and I realized, you know, I really wanted to take my art in a more spiritual direction and do more channeled paintings. And that wasn't really fitting in with the whole art festival circuit, at least not right now. So, you know, it was just redirecting me. And even though I was feeling lost and down in the dumps, you know, I trusted that spirit was still keeping me on track. Somehow those rejections we're just redirecting me, you know, like your GPS it says recalculating, recalculating. <laughs> so don't let things get you down. Don't feel like a setback is a setback because it's just recalculating and making sure that you're staying on the right path. Um, and trust your intuition too. You know, I was feeling guided to clean and organize my office space and get my art studio all set up. And I thought that I was doing it for these art shows, but, you know, it turned out those didn't happen. But then my mission was more fully revealed to me. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm starting a YouTube channel, you know, time to get to work. And I had my space all ready to go. So just even if something doesn't make sense, just trust your intuition and follow through with that because, um, you know, it's there for a reason. Um, so, you know, once you grow more in your wholeness, you're standing in your power, you're working on your soul mission, that will start to grow and expand and evolve. And then eventually you will reach union and then you have your mission with you and your beloved and you work together to serve others through your union so the mission within your union has an even bigger impact on bringing healing to the planet you know it's all about teamwork and strength in numbers and two can accomplish more than one you know when we look at how powerful twin flames are when we bring two twin flames together you know, the amount of healing and transformation that you can bring to the world is exponential. That flame just burns even bigger and brighter. So the mission of your union may be very simple. It could just be being an example of divine love for the world. It could be, you know, working with kids or working with the elderly or working with animals or plants, um, could just be parenting your children together and having a family. Maybe you would do local community work or maybe you would travel around the world. Maybe you'll be teachers or healers or coaches. So whatever it is, your union will be a powerful force of positive change that will create that ripple effect throughout the world and throughout the universe. And yes, the path of getting to union can be challenging, but like I said earlier, when we can stay focused on the bigger picture and remember why we chose this, then that can help give us the strength to really keep moving forward and to know that we can do it. And, you know, when we focus on all of that pain, all of that 3D heaviness, you know, then we're choosing that. What we focus on expands. So we can choose to focus on the pain or we can choose to focus on mission. We can choose to focus on the goal, that dangling carrot. <laughs> so, and ultimately the pain is there with a purpose. It's what fuels us to move forward in our spiritual growth, right? So without that pain, 
then we wouldn't have the fuel there to keep us growing and keep us evolving. You know, pain is a great motivator. So it helps us to be strong and wise and powerful through that pain and through the challenges. And we're strong. You know, we were born to do this. We are warriors of love. And this is why we are here. So I hope that this was helpful for you. And if you would like to reach out to me for assistance, I'll leave a link um, in the description box below with details about that. And I just want to let you know I'm sending you all so much love and light in your journey. And just remember that the world needs you and your unique gifts. So keep shining your light out into the world. Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye.